Once we've cached our simulation and added the textures to both the agents and the terrain, the next step would be to prepare the scene and render it. In other words, to export this scene as a video or as an image sequence. For years, we've been using in Houdini a renderer called Mantra. It's a very powerful renderer, but sometimes it can also be very slow. A couple of years ago, SideFX announced a new renderer called Karma that intends to replace Mantra in the future. Karma was included in Houdini 18 as a beta, but in the latest version, Houdini 19, it's ready to be used in production. Both Mantra and Karma are CPU renderers, meaning they don't really use the graphics card, but rely instead on the processor. Houdini also accepts external renderers like Renderman, Arnold, Redshift, Octane, but for now, we'll be focusing on these two included in Houdini. We'll talk about Mantra first, and later on, we'll see how to render our scene in the new Karma. To render a scene in Houdini, we need three things. A camera, lights, and a render node. Let's start with the camera. The easiest way to create a camera is by setting the viewport to the position and angle we want for our shot, framing the camera basically. I'll go with something like this and then hold the control key and click on the camera tool up here. This way Houdini will create a camera with exactly the same position and angle we had in the viewport. And you probably noticed there is a new node in the OBJ context called Cam1. This is our camera. Now if you look up here on the top right corner of the viewport, you'll see it says Cam1. This means that we are currently looking through the camera. But as soon as I move in the viewport, I'll exit the camera view. Now this thing up here says no cam. <laughs> Look, that's our camera right there. How can I go back to the camera view? Let's click on this no cam and select the camera you want to look through. In my case, the cam 1. In the camera node, the view and sampling tabs allow us to configure a lot of aspects as if it were a real camera. We can adjust the image resolution, the focal length, the shutter time, and even the f-stop to increase or decrease the depth of field. And here in the viewport, we see something new. This red frame is the camera frame. Anything within this red frame will appear in the final render. I can control the camera with these red arrows. Or by manually adjusting the parameters in the transform tab in the camera node, position and rotation. These red controllers, the frame and the arrows, appear in the viewport because I'm currently in the edit mode and my camera node is selected. If I select another node, those controllers disappear. Select the camera node and they will be back. If I place the pointer in the viewport and press escape, I'll exit the edit mode and the controllers will not be visible. Now if I press enter, I'll go back to the edit mode and the controllers will show up again. There is a faster way of controlling the position of our camera and it's with this lock icon you can find on the right side of the viewport pane. Make sure you're looking through the camera, turn on the lock button and now you'll be able to move in the viewport at the same time you change the camera position. If you look here at the parameters window, the position and rotation parameters will update as I move in the viewport. Thanks to this lock button, I can easily readjust my camera without having to use these red arrows or manually adjust the parameters. When you are done with the camera, make sure to turn off the lock button so you don't move it by accident later on. 
Okay, let's go now with the lights. And I must be clear on this, achieving a good lighting is not easy, and it can take hours or even days. For this scene, I'm going to use a very simple lighting, but as I said, this is something you really need to learn about. Keep in mind that good lighting is what makes the difference between an amateur scene and a professional scene. So don't underestimate lighting and spend as much time as you need setting up your lights. For my scene, I'm going to use a distant light, a light that mimics the sun. And the process is very similar to what we saw before with the camera. Move the view until you get the position and angle you want for your light. I want the sunlight to hit my agents from this angle. Then hold the control key and click on the distant light tool. You'll notice the viewport looks now a bit weird, and that's because Houdini uses the orthographic view when looking through a light. If you look up here, you'll see that we are actually looking through the distant light 1, the light we just created. This is very useful because we can adjust the light the same way we adjusted the camera, clicking on the lock button and moving around in the viewport until I get the right position and angle for my light. Turn off the lock button and let's go back to the camera view. We now have this light coming from the left. And in the OBJ context, there is a new node. This bulb is a light node called Distant Light 1. Great, so now that we've set up the camera and the light, let's go to the Render View tab here in the main pane. There are a few tabs above the viewport, let's open this one called Render View. This is where you will spend most of the time when setting up your renders. This window is also called IPR, Interactive Photorealistic Render, because as long as the renderer is active, the render will update on every change we make in our scene. By default, Mantra will render all the nodes that are being displayed in the OBJ context. Let me go back to the scene view, the viewport. Right now I'm displaying this geometry node containing my cache, the agents, and this one with the terrain. These two are the only geometry nodes with the display flag turned on, and so the only nodes that will be rendered. Ok, go back to the render view and press the render button, let's see what we get. The window will come alive, you'll see these small squares, and after a few seconds the first pixels of your scene will show up. Now, in the OBJ context, if I turn off, for example, the terrain, the render will start again, but this time without the terrain. If I turn it on, the render will update, now showing the terrain. That's what IPR, Interactive Render, means. While Mantra is active, the render will update on every change we make in the scene. We can disable it by clicking on this red button up here. This will stop Mantra, so you are free to make whatever changes you need in your scene. I'm going to press Render again. On the top right corner, it says how long the render has been running, the ETA, or remaining time, and the amount of memory Mantra is using. And on the top left corner, we have the render pass that we are looking at right now, C, the color pass, the frame that is being rendered, frame 171, the render resolution 1280 by 720, and this green line above is the render node and the time this render started. In my case, the render node is in the out context and it's called mantra underscore IPR. In the same way we have the OBJ context for the objects and the mat context for the materials, we also have the out context for managing our renders. Go to the out context and here is the mantra IPR node we saw before in the render view. This node controls how the render will be processed. 